Welcome to the very beginning of a whole new experience for me, something I've been wanting to do for ages, and that is learn to race at the Nordschleife, the old Nürburgring, and I get to race with my son, Alex. Alex is a 29-year-old professional racing driver. I'm a 60-year-old retired racing driver doing a bit of commentary. So he's the pro, I'm just having fun. What's the fast one? the fast one. Formula 3, Formula 1, uh, the Le Mans prototypes, and now VLN. It's uh, like, uh, why and how does this happen? My son Alex did his permit course last year and I was watching it with great interest and I was quite jealous actually. And I thought for my 60th birthday present to myself, I'd get a permit. And, and go racing at the Nordschleife. I'd never been around the track. I nearly raced here once in 1982 with Jaguar, but that's a long story. Um, I did 11 laps on my motorbike with, in the tourist laps, and I loved the place. My son Alex, of course, uh, was part of the winning team here in the Nürburgring 24 hours with the, with the new Vantage GT4, which was a great success for the team. Every time the kind of you strap him in or he straps me in and uh, we switch over and the other one heads out onto the track. It's, it's a great experience to know that uh, your genetic code is still behind the steering wheel. And, uh, and that comparison between us, uh, the two generations, but with the same, you know, with the same passion for, for racing and, and sharing that passion is uh, throughout, you know, basically our whole lives. You know, this is the sport which defines both of our professional and there's no way to uh, skirt around it, personal lives. And uh, to have that uh, to share is something really, something really special. What an experience this is going to be. I'm going back to school despite my decades of motorsport experience. Behind me is an Aston Martin GT4 that I'll be racing. But first off, I have to go into a classroom and then out on track behind an instructor. I've got to do a total of 18 laps. I mustn't break any of the regulations, make any mistakes, and then I'll get a permit to go racing. So we're coming towards the end of the first day and it involves going around the track in a bus. There's about 25 people doing their permit this weekend and having a look at certain sections, the ones that are most difficult. Come in too fast and you jump out, you've got to yeah, you fix are. the problem. Yeah. You're in, a, you're in trouble. As you can see, wherever you look, there's a chance to smash the car up. Thomas, you're my instructor for today. What's the program? The program. So, uh, Martin, it's the first hour. We have the track completely alone. Yeah, we are only with uh, 26 cars on the track to show you the line, the way you come back out, where are the safety barriers. Uh, one hour later, we're starting in the traffic to show you how many cars are on the, on the straight or on the corners when we drive in the race, to show you how it works to overtake and where the best positions are to overtake. So far so good, I've done the two runs behind the instructor, he's happy, he took me at quite good pace. The second run was in traffic, although there are only 70 odd cars on the track instead of 172 that will start the race on Saturday. Now the final part of getting the permit to go into the race 
is for me to do a total of eight laps by myself, unguided, which I'm about to start now. Eight laps completed, I've fulfilled all the criteria, so I should get my certificate now. Found 20 seconds per lap. Uh, from following the instructor, just getting up and just getting off the brake pedal basically, letting the car run a bit. Uh, it was good that the traffic's quite sensible, the slower cars get out of your way and the GT3s come at you so fast. No wonder they paint them quite brightly coloured and, and lots of lights on the front because when you're going through dips, minding your own business, trying not to hit the barriers yourself, suddenly this GT3 appears in your mirrors so you, you learn to look a long way out and start to record what's coming your way. Thomas, how did I go? You have done it very fine. Here's your certification and it gives you the right to start tomorrow yeah. in the class B of an Aston Martin. Great. Congratulations Martin. Thanks for your help. Great job. Yeah. I hope we can help you. Racing champion certificate. Racing champion. It's big. That's what we needed today. Yeah. So now we can go into the next phase of the weekend. That's it. With yeah. confidence and you do permission. two races and then you got the big permits, the permit A. It's race day here, VLN1 at the old Nürburgring, the Nordschleife. Over 170 cars in the race. It's foggy at the moment, but the F1 boys would love this. Practice and qualifying are one and the same thing. It's a one day event, so you just got to get on with it. We've got two flying laps each, and that's it. Park the car and get ready for the race itself. I guess that was my first real VLN lap. Um, everything's been compressed in time wise because of the fog. So we've just got one flying lap for practice and qualifying combined. Uh, oh my goodness, there's cars in the wall, there's cars, there's one car upside down off the track security vehicles, breakdown trucks. I've never seen so many incidents. I'm not sure I've ever seen that many incidents in one race, let alone one lap of a circuit. I know it's a very long lap, but... So that, that was um, a fairly uh, amazing welcome to the world of VLN and what I'm expecting a lot more of this afternoon. I mean, at the end of the day, there are 172 cars out there. Everything from works drivers in works GT3 cars to hobby races in whatever, you know, run what you run kind of thing. I guess that's the charm of it. It's certainly the challenge of it. I'm going in third now. I'll get eight laps in at the end of the race. Hopefully, that's the plan. But I need 18 to get my permit, which puts us under pressure for the second race, where I need, obviously, then at least 10 laps. So let's hope I get my eight laps in today. Well, mission accomplished, what a drama over two days that was. I got the certificate, crazy. Uh, uh, this morning in qualifying was just mad. The race, a little bit less crazy. I found myself some time to get a bit of a rhythm going. Brilliant, absolutely loved it. I've learned so much in the last two days. So this is what it's all about. With my beloved Kermit here, the 300 horsepower Permit car, I was able to get one of these, a grade A permit. That means I can now race in this beautiful new Aston Martin Vantage GT4 with over 500 horsepower at the fearsome Nordschleife circuit, the old Nürburgring. And I get to race with my son, Alex. So we'll just run through the controls of the new car. Um, top right, you've got your master switch. If you flick that over to P2, we've got P1 and P2. P1, your oil pumps will turn over and allow you to get oil pressure up. And then P2, the fuel pumps will run and the car will fire. Shift up and down, are these indicators? Yep, that's your indicators left and right. Oh, I see, you have to hold, you have that. To hold those you on. You have to hold that on, that's interesting. And that's if you've got a GT3 coming past yes, you or something, that's to tell them which way, way you're. Yep. I didn't do that before, because they seem to 
decide yeah. they're going to come past you one way or the other anyway. Yeah, I mean, this car is a whole different league in speed differential. So, uh, I mean, yeah. GT3s, you'll be working a bit more with them. Um, yeah. Because you're similar speed to them on a lot, a lot yeah. of sections. So, Kesselschen and the longer sections, you'll be very similar in speed to a GT3. So, yeah. you can sort of say, look, I'm yeah. going to move this way and come off the throttle a little bit and work with them a bit more, whereas the old one was like, by the time you'd seen them, they were gone kind yeah. of thing. So. This is a minute and a lap faster from what I can work <laughs> This is a radar system that's in, in this car, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. uh, this will actually show you where a car's coming and it will, depending on the speed differential of the car behind, will give you a different coloured arrow. Right. So if the speed differential is really big, it will change colour and it will yeah. flash. So it will say, look, there's a car coming to your right hand side, you need to be aware of that. Yeah. Um, and it will have an arrow above it and it's very accurate. Um, you'll actually see it will pick up apart individual cars. So if you've got two or three cars behind you, it will notice the GT3 and tell you, look, the GT3 is coming in really quick. Oh, wow. Um, so it is, it's really, really advantageous to have that and be, you just keep your eye on that at all times. When do you get a chance to look at the track? <laughs> with, with all of this lot going yeah. on in front of you. So that's yeah. instead of your rear view mirror, that's yes. really a super complex rear view mirror. Yes. Um, so we have found that we tried a traditional rear view mirror, but this system yeah. was effective, uh, so effective that it, yeah. it was just unnecessary. Okay. It's, it's harder to try and focus on the rear view mirror yeah. and pick anything out when this is actually look, telling yeah. you what's exactly what's there. And you've still got your door mirrors anyway, haven't you? You still have so. your door mirrors. Yeah. So. so it's not like you're working only on that. Yeah. So this is it, the LN7. I get to drive the new Aston Martin Vantage GT4. Important day for testing. I'm hoping to get out on slick tyres. Junior Brundle here, won the N24 in the car. You know it well, what do you think? I think you've got a job on your hands to get back on top of the thing this afternoon, then fish bosh bash straight into quality tomorrow. But uh, I believe in you, man, you can do it. So this is it, the old Norge Lake. The first corner on that. And we head down the hill towards Hatsenbach. So I really got to take it sensible on this first lap and find my way with this car. I'm already feeling that it's you know nicely balanced. Four. Oh yeah, it's a proper little racing car, it's good. Plenty of torque. That is quick into there. So we nearly as quick as we are down the back straight. Why don't we have to get some speed off into here before we arrive? And we're coming to that really damp part. I don't know what to do with this. Whether you can just pushing on. It doesn't really let me go. It's indicating, but it's not letting me go. Sun shining down the track, can't really see the entrance to the carousel, but this looks okay. Go too fast into the air, boy. Bunch garden, little jump off the brake. Double apex right, flat left, A little hop down the hill here. Just wandering around a bit in there. Come on. Right. Scrappy. Too aggressive, too... Just finding my way. It was right. The one thing that's slightly strange is the crates where you, you jump. There's two or two places where you're going through a, quite a fast, loaded corner, and there's a jump, and the car goes up 
takes a step yeah. and comes, comes down. Yeah, that's what I had with that car and from some of as well. Yeah. 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 So you'll, you'll just feel a little, I mean, I guess with more laps, I'll feel more certain about it. But when the front sort of jumps like that, you know there's no margin yeah, yeah. for one or two meters here no, or one no, or two no. meters there. Through the long right, and then that next one, you'll, you'll start off with a brush of brake and you'll end up doing this. Yeah. Then you're flat. It's a good place to save fuel if you want to. Bumpy, thing moves around like that. You go in and it's super tempting to go in really fast yeah. and then lose out in the middle. Don't do that. Go in and then take all the time in the slow one. Yeah. And then, and then it's all te technique-y, but it's all about rolling yeah. speed. Welcome everybody to another VLN race for 2019. Thank you for joining the Radio Show Limited Network live from the Nürburgring Nordschleife, a very wet Nürburgring Nordschleife. Woken up on Saturday morning, both qualifying and race today. Wet on the ground, so one lap each only in uh, qualifying to get ahead around it. Let's see how we get on. Difficult to get the tyres warm from oil or something in the in straight tan Alex. Being careful, I passed 20 cars on that lap, on the one, my one qualifying lap. I passed 20 cars and I had one come past me, so I was getting, I was moving along. And then you think, oh yeah, this is all right. And then boom, there's a Cayman Porsche, you know, that's rotated and taken the front and back off it. And you think, okay, I'm one bit of overconfidence away from doing that. You get little groups of lack of confidence traffic all trying to get out of the way and keep out of each other's way and you catch them so quickly and then of course as you're trying to navigate that lot as they're slipping around somebody suddenly gets on your tail so you're watching a gt3 in the mirrors or in that screen trying to work out what his plans are uh, and also I think some of the weekend warriors, their eyes are on stalks in these conditions. They are literally surviving. How is that? How is that? 10, 15, 10, 15. Starting to rain again now, starting to rain. In terms of position, we are still P2 or? The moment we are. But it looks like the bug is also on the track. Brakes are good. Brakes are very good. Brakes cars, good. cars are remarkably good in that in that condition. I think so. Okay, well, there's some little beamers out there having some moments. Is that Cayman still in the wall through Whitman? Yeah. So that's what oh, it's still dragging out, aren't it? So qualifying's finished with P2 in class, Alex, with your time. Yep. It's between us and that, Black Mark, Mark and Merck, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Metler. For, for the, apparently he's like the super hot champion yeah. elect or something. Yeah, that guy now. Yeah. So I better be going faster, haven't I, when during my nice You'll do it, you'll do it. So, yeah. so you're going to get flying down our car. So you, you, um, yeah, you start. Uh, I start. Tracks. If the track's still changing and you're dialed into it, I might as well stay in. I'm going to do two. Stay in. I'm going to do two, and then you're going to maybe do the middle, maybe do the end. Yeah, definitely. But I think if the track's changeable and you're dialed in, it makes no sense putting me out, and then you've got to learn the track later on. Yeah. I might as well. You might as well. Yeah, especially as I've just done more laps in the red than you yeah. anyway. And I like you to do the scary bits. <laughs> the start. Oh, yeah, right. thanks for that. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be nuts. Okay, here it is then, the start of the race. Alex is in the car. I'm really pleased he is, frankly, because these conditions look treacherous. 154 cars start the race. We're second on the grid in our class, 25th overall. So good effort from Alex in qualifying. And this is it for our race. Uh, we don't know if uh, he's going to do double stint and I'll finish the race. We'll see how it goes. Okay, it's going to drive pretty quick. So um, you need to get a feel for the fuel windows to the end of the race. I'm going to tell you what the track is like, but there's going to be a point, I suspect, earlier than eight laps 
where I'm going to look at the bottom of your okay? Still rain on the camera screen, I noticed, as the cars get underway. So the rain seems to still be coming down on the Grand Prix circuit. Windscreen wipers definitely the order of the day, as well as those red lights are extinguished from the bridge. There's almost a bit of door handle banging. The amount of spray that was being kicked up as they came down into that uh, first little uh, few sequence of corners. Alex Brundle reaching the end of the main straight, deliberately going deep into the first corner, again to pick out the wetter portions of the track. And it is second in the SB8 T-Class, hunting down Yannick Mettler's Mercedes AMG GT4. Raining in the floor rain here. Ideal tyre is intermediate. Okay, copy. Okay, after the tyre change, you stay in the car, in the car. The left times are yeah, nearly perfect. The last lap, yes, the last lap is a complete field. Aston Martin heading onto the Dottinger Hoer is still Alex Brundle for the AMR Performance Center in the Vantage AMR GT4. This car now leading SP8T. We're losing massive time this lap. It's too difficult on the inter, but we can't change back, so let's keep going. Just coming up to half distance, Alex is out on track. We went to cut slicks, which gained us a lot of time. We're 15th overall now and first in class, but then it rained like crazy. They've elected to stay out at the moment. It must be so slippery out there. I'm in next. vibration. I think we lost the tyre at the front. The tyre is loose or we have a failure. Yeah, it's just at the moment we see it in our day to the front left of the counter. Is this a problem for the number 156 Aston Martin? Has the lights flashing? It looks maybe a front left puncture. Puncture. I try not to damage the car on the way back, but I have a long way, a long, long way to go. A long way, and it's all the way down. I'm in, uh, I'm in, uh, the Brooklyn. Okay, I'll try to get it back. It has now slipped to second position in class. No lack of flaming, but it's wet everywhere. Not as good. Well, what happened is we boxed and then I put it on inters and then for like a brief window there we were rapid versus everybody else on the wet. Then it rained again I'm struggling. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done in a race car to try and hold on to it. Temperatures and pressures dropping, temperatures and pressures dropping. And we just got unlucky with the left front puncture into flood plats, which is like 10% of the way through the lap. So I just drove it back for like 20 kilometers with the left front carcass flapping everywhere to try and get it back without rooting all the bodywork, which we've, I think we've managed to do. We led the class by like 45 seconds, didn't we? And then uh, we se seemed like we were holding and I was waiting for the moment where it was gonna drive up, dry up and we we're gonna take off again. There we go. Uh, Got it to the front anyway, and let's see what Dad can do. He's the XF1 driver, he'll be leaving again in two laps, as we all know. Yeah. 
him that last time was perfect. We are just half of our class in a moment. Perfect. Keep going. Steve is ready for six. Ready for six. Fifth lap. Yeah, the track, if there's no more rain, the track is ready for six. Well done, we are second in class and second in class. <laughs> oh mate, you've had three unlucky weekends <laughs> in a row. <laughs> I know. Wow. We'd have won without the puncture then, yeah? We'd have won the class. It would have been hard. It would have been would close. It? Would it? Yeah. He was he was on it at the end of the other boat. It shouldn't matter that much, but it does, does it? <laughs> you drove well to get P2 back, though. Did you? Yeah. yeah. yeah you, you came, you came back out behind, behind P2, and you pulled us past him. Oh, Left front puncture, going to it, and then I had to drag it. I thought, Three I thought, of the I thought we'd broken it. I thought yeah. I'd break it. You're on the rim. You're on the rim. Yeah, when yeah, you got yeah. To I the... saw it come off. Mario came on the radio. This is your last lap, Martin. I thought, <laughs> maybe forever. Man, one puncture. That's the way the cookie, that's the way the cookie from you. Oh, I'd like to have won that. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Well done, son. Another trophy for the cabinet. Well, we got a couple of trophies, Al, for our blood, sweat and tears and a few scary moments out there. Yeah, well, from zero to, uh, to trophy holder at the Norse Life is a pretty good effort, mate, I have to say. And, uh, yeah, it would have been nice to get the win, but uh, it wasn't for us today. And it's second place just proves it's hard. The car, <laughs> the car and the team were brilliant, though, weren't they? The car was faultless and the pit stops were good. Just a silly puncture. Got super unlucky with that puncture, but to be honest, I mean, we we can only really be happy with that. And uh, carrying on my adventures here, and uh, hopefully you'll come back I, and do a bit more. I think I have to come back. Yeah, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. I mean, I did it for fun, but it's ended up being something really. Just special. for that smile you had on your face when you got out in Park Ferme, I think you should come back. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about Mario on the radio, like this is your last lap, Martin. I'm like. It might just be, actually. I, mm, think, nah, I think you know I've it's not. Do, I've got to see <laughs> something else, <laughs> yes, no. somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It's good. Anyway. There you go. There we go. Carry well pot. Wonderful experience. Sky Sports F1. Feel it all.